Tutankhamun is arguably the most famous of all the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. The boy king's grave lay hidden in the Egyptian desert for nearly 3,000 years, until it was discovered in 1922 by British archaeologist Howard Carter. And while the outer chambers had been looted in antiquity, the inner chambers had survived the centuries untouched. When the inner burial chamber was finally unsealed, Carter's patron, Lord Carnarvon, who waited outside, called down asking if he could see anything. Carter's response? Yes, wonderful things. The treasures found inside were unparalleled in all of Egypt. Among the artifacts were furniture, chariots, jewelry, and the entire untouched sarcophagus of King Tutankhamun the iconic golden death mask being perhaps the most identifiable artifact to be recovered from the tomb. But our story follows another artifact found inside this tomb, Tutankhamun's pectoral, a type of ancient chest ornament worn by pharaohs. Crafted with gold and precious minerals, the central falcon scarab emblem holds a translucent pale yellow stone. Originally ignored as a common type of quartz called chalcedony, an Italian researcher analyzed the stone and found it to be a rare type of glass known as Libyan desert glass, dating not from the time of the ancient Egyptians, but to a time 29 million years earlier. Where had this mysterious glass come from, and why was it so old? Glass is usually created by heating up silicon dioxide, the principal component in sand and quartz, until it's a molten liquid, and then cooling it back down into a solid. While it's essentially the same material as quartz, it lacks its regular crystalline structure. Instead, the molecules are organized in a chaotic manner reminiscent of a liquid. This is where the idea that glass is actually a liquid comes from. Glass is neither a liquid nor a solid, but something in between, known as an amorphous solid, displaying properties of both a liquid and a solid. For a clue as to where this Libyan desert glass came from, let's fast forward to a desert not in ancient Egypt, but in the U.S. state of New Mexico. The date is July 16th, 1945, and the time is 5.29 in the morning. A device known informally as the Gadget, the product of some of the best scientific minds of the 20th century, is wired atop a tower 100 feet in the air. A circuit closes and the device vaporizes in an instant with the force of 20,000 tons of TNT leaving behind its signature mushroom cloud as the human race enters the era of atomic weapons. In the aftermath of this first test of the atom bomb, the desert sands below the test site were transformed by the extreme heat into a mineral never seen before, a greenish radioactive glass named trinitite, after the Trinity nuclear test site where it had been created. This material is a complex mixture of minerals from the test site, primarily quartz and feldspar, along with vaporized bomb fragments. All these ingredients were sucked up into the hot fireball of the nuclear explosion and rained down as a type of molten glass. While a nuclear explosion in the deserts of Africa millions of years ago is clearly impossible, there are other natural possibilities to create a glass similar to trinitite. The first is volcanic activity. When lava, which is high in silicon dioxide, also known as silica, cools quickly, it forms a glass which is known as obsidian. This naturally occurring glass was known even to prehistoric people hundreds of thousands of years ago, and was used in pottery or napped into sharp glass spears and arrowheads. While obsidian is common throughout the world, this explanation is a poor fit for Libyan desert glass because while normal obsidian is usually 65 to 80% silica, Libyan desert glass is nearly entirely pure silica and volcanoes just aren't hot enough to create a glass that rich in silica. So what other possibilities are there? Another possibility for creating desert glass is through a lightning strike. Known as fulgurites, these can have the high silica content of Libyan desert glass, but may have a shape which displays the electrical nature of their creation, with the stone branching out in many directions, much like a lightning bolt. However, while fulgurites are found in the deserts of northern Africa, Libyan desert glass contains another important element that fulgurites lack, iridium. Iridium is a rare metal here on Earth. 40 times less common than gold, it is also the second densest metal. Because of this, most of the iridium on our planet sank to the core when the Earth was still molten. Meteors, however, have much higher concentrations of iridium. They contain the same amount as when they originally formed out in space. 
as Libyan desert glass contains iridium and it's strong evidence that its creation was due to a meteor event. One final clue to the formation of Libyan desert glass is one of the rarest minerals on Earth, reedite. Reedite is only formed during meteor impacts when the mineral zircon encounters extremely high temperatures and pressures, much like how diamonds form from carbon deep in the Earth. The zircon recrystallizes into a more compact form, about 10% denser than ordinary zircon. But when scientists looked, they found no reedite in the Libyan desert glass. However, reedite is unstable under high temperatures and can decay back into zircon under the extremely high temperatures encountered in a meteor blast. And through a technique called electron backscattering diffraction, scientists have found evidence in the zircon crystals in Libyan desert glass. Through this crystallographic technique, scientists can see echoes of the former reedite in the current zircon crystal structure, firmly establishing a meteor impact as the cause of this mysterious glass. And while a crater for this event has yet to be found, it may have eroded in the eons of time which have passed or simply been covered over by the countless dunes of the desert. However, we do have enough clues to piece together a story which starts with a meteor impact millions of years earlier and ends in the tomb of a boy pharaoh with a piece of jewelry whose stone was aptly named by the Egyptians as the Rock of God. <laughs>